Hi friends, hello the world, welcome to this episode of Tools for Transitioning Humanitarians and here is another exciting topic that I really want to like get into details about how to do and also bringing your awareness to that skill that we as human beings have and that's just so fascinating and I was discussing with several of my clients and one of my clients actually made such a big leap and the topic that I want to talk about is the big leap and I will use her example and I will use my own example to highlight how we're doing it and I really want you to try out and start exploring that skill that you have as well that maybe is not utilized at all or maybe uh, you're using it in small chunks. So one of the uh, clients that I have, uh, we started working like a month ago and uh, she came to me not knowing what to do. She thought that she needed to go back to being a humanitarian again, uh, even though uh, she wanted to spend time with her daughter. And she also had other uh, personal uh, issues that she wanted to resolve. So she was like being very exhausted and not like confused and not knowing what to do and how to proceed, where to proceed and feeling like everything that she's trying is not working. And then we, and I proposed to her to uh, do this big leap and uh, follow only what her really like soul and heart wants to do and drop everything else and how would that look like right of course these are all in imagination and not really doing it anything outside but once she started doing this the process that I will talk to you now that she made this big leap that is so incredible that within the months she not only decided what to do and uh, which direction to take she actually even purchased a big um uh, uh property uh, where she wants to do her designing work that's one what, what she really like from heart she wants to do she wants to be an interior designer and she wants to showcase her work in that uh property and she has already purchased it and she's already uh working towards how to make that happen and she's learning the tools um, on the way how to create that work and that's like totally the different direction but she was not allowing her to herself to go there because of fear because of lots of different things and then once we cleared out all of them then she was able to go to shift her focus uh, 360 degrees right so um, from uh, the place of uh, not knowing what to do and uh, being confused as to how to proceed with her life um, to going to deciding what to do and then even uh, purchasing that property and going for it full on board um, and already knowing what is the return she'll be having in by the end of this year. So this is one of the examples of Big Leap that I really want to bring your awareness to how you have that skill as well even though humanity I think is like many of us right are so used to having this incremental growth of um, having a little bit of growth here expecting a little bit of growth there but I understand also that many of us humanitarians may not want to really make the transition if there is really not a significant change, right? Because otherwise uh, incremental growth may not be really um, a motivating factor, which I understand. So that's why I want to talk to you today about the big leap of what it is, why it's important and how to do it if you are interested, right? So big leap is the way that I'm defining is making a very significant self-concept shift, significant shift in the way that you want to live your life, and then going all for it and creating that. And that does not take a lot of time, um, interestingly, or um, like at least the, the shift in the self-concept does not take a lot of time or it doesn't need to take a lot of time. But because of our habitual thinking pattern that says everything needs to be very hard uh, things need to take a lot of time 
Uh, it needs to take a lot of work because of those habitual patterns that we many of us have. We don't often allow for the big leap to occur. So that's why big leap is that ability or using the ability that we have to make that drastic or radical change from uh, like 360 degree change and and trusting yourself in the process that you can make that change is already an amazing way of showing to yourself what you are capable of right so that's a big leap that I'm talking about now, uh, the example that uh, I have used with my client, you have seen, uh, but also I want to use another example that I have had recently is that I um, I wanted to show myself how I can do that simply because I wanted to use that skill and I wanted to do like an experiment type of thing. Uh, because I do experiments so often in my life and I have been doing so many different experiments with Big Leap. But this time I thought that I want to do it very specifically related to a um, uh, a money goal, for instance, right? So I thought that uh, always when I make the Big Leap, I always then explain away by saying, well, I have done this and I have done that. Um, and I... I really wanted to show to my brain that I can do the big leap even with very concrete, tangible things, right? So and once I have achieved that um, in February, I was like blown away with my own mind of how powerful our brains are, how powerful our uh, skills are, how powerful um, what we can actually create if we put if we put down some of the process that I will be talking about as to allowing for that big leap to occur in our lives. So um, the monetary goal that I had uh, uh, envisioned and then I have created in February, now I'm going for the um, more than the double amount. So I'll, all I want to say with this is that even when I have tried it in my own life so often in the uh, before, it was always with intangible things like spending more time with loved ones or um, uh, having like total flexibility in my free time or um, having a certain growth in my uh, personal growth. And this time I have been like, as of this year, I have decided to apply this big leap, excuse me, process for my uh, uh, coaching practice goals, uh, uh, applying it with my clients and in my own life in terms of very tangible results. So this is how I have been doing it. And this is how I have been doing it every time. And I'm like reporting from my own practice, right? Reporting from my own uh, experience. And I really want you to um, think about how you can apply this to yourself as well. So the process that I have, oh, sorry, uh, before I wanted to dive into the process, I wanted to show you one important thing, which is why Big Leap is important. And I have talked about it a little bit, but one of the main reasons why Big Leaps are important, I find, is because simply showing to ourselves how powerful our brains, our body, our minds, our souls, how powerful they are once we trust them, once we recognize their power, once we recognize the power within us, once we understand and really like internalize how powerful they are, they are ready to show us what's possible in the world, what realities we can create for ourselves. And I think this is one of the big, big reasons why we need to practice allowing big leaps in our lives to occur and especially allowing those big leaps to occur in the in the time frame that we set out for ourselves right and and another reason why big leaps can be so powerful is because um it also counterbalances our fear brain that says that, oh, this is not possible, or this is not possible, or we can't do that, we can't do that, right? So whenever our fear brain wants to like withhold us or um, wants to keep telling us how this won't work and that won't work and that won't work and counterbalance that by saying, let's go for a very 
big shift and change. Let's go for a total change in our lives, total change in our direction of where we're going. And let's go for making that happen. And then I think our fear brain, it will be scared, but at the same time, it will somehow allow us to um, like go all in and be so committed to if we're going to make things happen in the big way, in the big shift way, then we may as well go all in and then have all the like like spend all of our resources and and have a look at what's possible what we can create right we get into this i think um very experimental also very uh, curious and very like open and flexible open minded open hearted uh, state of mind instead of like pushing the stone a little bit to the incremental growth, right? Pushing it a little and then going a bit further, going a bit further and then um, feeling like exhausted or feeling like, I hope we get it. I hope we get it, right? And instead of being in that space, we get into this abundant resources that we like, as if we have now all of a sudden available that we're now going for that big shift. So that's why I think big shift or sorry, big leaps are so um, amazing uh, ability that we have to create for ourselves. So now here is the process that I have been uh, applying for my own life. And I have been also helping my clients apply in their lives, right? So the first thing that I do that I practice most of the time, whenever I have like awareness of free time whenever I'm not focused doing something else most of the time what I do is getting to know myself being the person who has done it already right getting to know myself as the person who has that result who has that life already so who is that person who am I how how do I spend my time how do I um, work on things how do I problem solve how do I uh, make sure things that I said I would do happen? Getting to know myself, being the person who has already done that. And you may have heard so many different ways that people do that. Some people say that the future self, right? And even if you think about in, in terms of future self, you can still be very specific as to the person who has done that thing already, right? Who is that person who has already achieved that? And getting to know that person, getting to feel that person every time you get a chance to do that. And then what I have found is so fascinating for me is the second stage is then that version of me and the current version of me start aligning and becoming this one person. Like I become like aligned of being that one person who's uh, creating that thing happen, even though we are the one person anyway, right? It's just that I, as if I'm like using my ability to go into the future to be the person, like see myself being the person who has already done it and then feeling that person being that person and then starting to act and do all the things from that person instead of my current person who may be like, oh, I don't think this will work. I don't think that will work. I tried this and it didn't work. And not spending any of the time and energy in that space, right? Because I'm already the person who has done it, who has achieved it. So I know that I can do that. I'm just figuring out how I, I have gotten there, right? I'm just figuring out to go there. Even when I'm speaking to you now about this, it feels like very uh, playful, very curious, very like, let me just explore how I am uh, I have gotten there. How, let me just explore how I will have gotten there in the future, right? So that's why as if like looking backward and then just telling this is how we've done it, right? Imagine you have already currently achieved a goal that you really wanted to achieve or you wanted to be in a place that you really wanted to be and you have gone through a certain path 
And if I were to ask you how you did that, you would be able to tell me, like, maybe you will also say, well, some of them was luck, right? Many of uh, the people may say that, but also some of the processes or some of the ways that you have gone through, you will be able to tell me that. And the same goes for the future, only it's not there yet, but you are imagining already being the person who has done it, and now you're just figuring out how you have done it. So the first step, as I said, is like as if using your ability to go to that future and be in like getting to know that person who has already done it. And then second is feeling that person, getting to know that person and aligning yourself with that person with that version of you and with the current version of you and aligning those two. And then third, acting from that person, right? Being the person who does that, who resolves that, who problem solves that, and how does that person does it? So you can see the difference is that instead of trying to like go to the future or trying to get to the goal, we are acting from that future already, from that having done person, and then we're just figuring out how we have gotten, gotten to make that happen. And therefore, whenever the doubts come, whenever the fear comes, whenever things like, oh, it won't happen or this won't happen, we we'll always can remind ourselves that, no, 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 we have done it. It's just that we need to figure out how we got there. And that's just like a fascinating way of uh, making that big leaps happen. And then... The fourth one that I like to do is uh, I like to always think about like what are the habitual ways that version of me does, right? What are the habitual ways of problem solving? What are the habitual ways of looking at things? What are the habitual, like I try to establish some type of a routine or some type of a, a habit that I just keep following and then doing it. For instance, one of the ways that I have uh, realized that um, the version of me who has achieved that goal, she's so good at solving problems and getting out of those problems in the end, a very strong person. She's so good at that. She's so good at that, that she's not worried about any of the problems, any of the challenges. Yes, it will be uh, disappointing. Yes, it will be frustrating. But at the same time, there is this deep trust that says, I will go out on the other side being a very strong person. I will go out on the other side being the person who says, I'm proud I have solved this. I have solved this in this way without avoiding difficulties, right? So that's why I like start getting glimpse uh, into what skills she already has and possesses. And then I just keep like borrowing it or I just keep like bring it to my current um, self and saying that, yeah, she already knows how to do this so well. So let me just practice um, those skills. Let me just practice being that person who has those skills. And then I just keep applying it. And one of the recent, like one of the skills that I have recently applied in my own life is that um, usually whenever I apply for visa applications, uh, I like used to be the person who says, oh my God, I can't believe I'm doing this again. Oh, I don't want to be doing this again. What the hell and all the things. And then like going through this miserably and then feeling like, oh, right, I have to. And then I feel like exhausted and drained by doing it. And this time I'm applying actually for the US visa because I want to go to a um, an amazing event in July. And that's why um, I wanted to get an appointment. And in Kyrgyzstan, uh, it's impossible to get an appointment because it's uh, the embassy slots are all full um, until uh, August. And, um, and then, um, I I asked myself, so that person in the future who has done it all, right, who has achieved that goal that I um, want to achieve, how does she look at these things and how does she solve it without spending so much energy and drainage on all the uh, things of how unfair it is and all the things, right? How does she do that? 
and then the the skill that I realized that I will have by then is the skill of not spending too much energy on unnecessary things, not spending any brain time on things of like complaining or not only complaining, but like feeling like, oh, I have to do this. But instead, how do I do it in a way that's so that will sound when when I have finished it, it will sound so extraordinary that I'm like, wow, this is what I have done. I have done everything I could within my power without spending so much time and energy on how unfair and how all the things. So once I have applied that skill of feeling like I'm going through this in a very powerful, strong way, I'm going to through this and at the end I will know that I have done an extraordinary job of making that thing happen even if it doesn't it's not within my control right but I have done my best of everything I know how and guess what I have applied for the getting the appointment in Kyrgyzstan in Kazakhstan in Uzbekistan and now I'm about to do that in Italy so I have, I will have done four different application process in four different countries to get one U.S. visa. And, and I'm like looking back at all the things that I have done to get that, right? I think of it as extraordinary that I have gone through this. I have done lots of different application processes. I have paid the fees and contacted people and lots of different things. But I have done it in a very powerful way of if I really want something, I can do so many things and I can make things happen without feeling like oh, I have to or uh, I hope this is over. I hope I will get to the other side and then I will just rest without doing any of that. And I thought that my future person who has done this goal she is so powerful. She already knows how much she can create, how much she can achieve, and how much she can do things in order to make sure that thing gets done and created. And when I think of that now, and when I apply that now, I'm just amazed how much I can do and how much I can like make sure that things happen in the way that I want things to happen. Now, of course, in the end, is there a guarantee that I will get the US visa? No, there is no guarantee, right? It will still, the decision will depend on them. But I still have created that experience for myself where I am so proud of what I have done and all the extraordinary things that I did to get to my goal, right? And the same I'm doing now with my other goal uh, for my coaching practice. And when I see how my clients can make that big leap and how I am doing that big leap, I'm just like, wow, this is possible within us as humans. And, and we're not doing it on a regular basis. Why not? Right? So that's why I really wanted to share with you my amazement of how much we are powerful and how much of the skills that we have to make the big leaps if we wanted to. I think we just don't allow ourselves to do that because we don't believe enough that we will have done it in, in the future. And we don't believe enough to go to that future and then seeing and getting to know our version of that future and then starting to apply that from now and embodying that version of us already now who has done that because that takes a lot of probably um, brain shifting to use our future as the reference point as the as the place from which we depart rather than the past right because we're so good at departing from the past of what we're capable of what we have done what we were able to achieve and the same type of thinking only we're shifting to the future and once we shift to the future and we're like okay I will have created this thing and this thing and this thing or this life and this life and this life and then looking at okay how did I create that in the future 
and then being that person who creates and then gets and figures out. And this big leap, I really want you to experience for yourself. I really want you to experience, especially with goals like, for instance, you want to have your um, amazing career and uh, your amazing um, uh, personal life uh, with a partner, with children uh, in the same place, uh, having the time to spend with them. All of that unbelievable sounding goals or dreams that you have, imagine you are you have achieved that now right you have achieved that now already and then get to know the person who has achieved get to know you in that future who has already done that and then start embodying that and start living that you now and then start creating all the things start improving and using those skills that the future version of you has already mastered it start applying that now and I hope that I was able to explain to you in the way that sounds doable for you if if you think about it it's actually only three steps that you need to do just so that I can wrap it up right so the first is like imagining you being the person who has already done it and then aligning yourself with your current self and that future self together and then acting from that place as a third step keep acting from that place and then keep creating things towards figuring out how you have already created it and that's it and all of this will require you to trust yourself to trust your future self trust or believe that you have already done it and then keep going towards it rather than keep hoping that it will happen, keep hoping that uh, all of things to get together. And and what I also realize is that when we are in that mode of using the future as a starting point rather than the past, we can only do that with things that we really love doing. We can only do with things that we really, our heart and souls are on it. Then it works so beautifully it works so easily and we don't need to do that out of i have to because it's a future that does not yet exist right and we're creating it and interesting is that we cannot create it from i have to but rather we can only create it from i love being this person i love doing this work i love having this life And then we can all meet you from that. And that's why also I love future as a starting point, as a parting point rather than the past. Okay, my dears, do you want to work on this with me? I would love to invite you to work on this together. Um, As I told many of you already that um, March is the the month where my uh, coaching Uh, practice lots are getting full I'm so excited about it so that's why if you want to grab one of that spots this is the time and then April will be already with price increase and other conditions so that's why I'm really looking forward to hearing from you and working with you until then have an amazing weekend bye